Great abundance is on the way, but we must look to the lessons of the past and we must look within ourselves to be able to fully manifest it on today's episode of the High Priestess's Circle. Greetings, everyone. I'm Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on this Elemental Sinistry reading. It's a divination technique I devised, which uses the tarot, astrology, and the five elements. This is a reading which transcends space and time, so if you resonate with this message, then this message is for you. So I start off with the element of spirit, which is represented by the bell. And I draw a tarot card to see what is influencing that particular element. Okay. So we have the Page of Wands, which is influencing it. And it means that within the spirit, we are about to, let's say, start off on an endeavor. It means that that good news is on the way. Um, perhaps we are about to take a risk. Perhaps, um, you know, we are, we, we are, we are about to begin something, but it's, it's generally, um, a card of, of a beginning of a journey. And the fact that it's influencing the spirit is suggesting that there is a period of manifestation, which is about to happen. Um, and again, the spirit is also the ether. It's it's the astral realm. It is something which has not manifested yet, but it's sort of in the works. So basically, a, a lot of good news is coming our way. A, a lot of good things are, are headed towards us. Okay. Now, after I draw the card, I roll the astrology die to, to basically see what the outcome or the advice is. Okay, so we have Jupiter in Pisces in the sixth house. All right, let me line this up really quick. I roll once for the house and I roll a second time for the Deccan. Okay, we got a nine. All right, excellent. So what we have here, okay, this is this is turning out really positive really quick. Um, all of the elements, the rest of the reading is going to relate back to the spirit. Spirit leads the way. And what we're having here is a period of expansion. And the third decan of Pisces is, um, is a very positive card. It's, it's the joy card. Um, and it basically is sort of you know, fulfilled success, um, a lot of happiness, a lot of joy within our world. And the fact that it's influenced by Jupiter means that it's also a, a period of expansion. So we have a lot of, a lot of expansion and a lot of positivity coming in, combined with the Page of Wands, you know, which is, which is representing the bearer of good news. Um, again, a, a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of positivity, a lot of fruitful endeavors are about to be, are about to happen. Now, we are in the house of Virgo, which represents health and service to others. So, what we're finding is, or, or what it's suggesting is that in our in our expansion and and in discovering our joy and 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 also with it being influenced by the Page of Wands we can begin to help push that manifestation in, in progress by being of service to others and also by taking care of ourselves. So a, a very, a very positive read so far. Okay, let's look at, let's look at what's happening in the fire. All right. So fire is represented by the wands and it is, it is a human spirit. It is our ambitions, our drive. Um, again, it's the one because it's focused energy and our focused intentions. 
Okay, so what is influencing the element of fire? Okay. Ah, all right. So we have the Three of Swords, which is called the Lord of Sorrow. It's also, a lot of times it's also representing, let's say, a type of a type of surgical process. Now, you know, if anyone's having any health issues or anything like that, make sure to consult your doctor as well. You know, ju just don't take an elemental synastry reading for it. But this would suggest that that there is something that we have to work out within our body. There is something that we have to work out um, regarding our health, which is really interesting because, you know, we also have Virgo influencing um, the spirit, which also has to relate to, again, like I said, service to others or health, um, purifying our bodies, let's say. So this would also go and suggest the same thing. Now, the way that it relates back to the element of fire is that it would suggest that we would have to, let's say, purify our intentions, purify our ambitions, make sure that we know that what we are doing is in the highest and best with, with what we need. Okay, so what do the astrology die have to recommend for that? All right, Saturn and Aquarius in the 11th house. All right, a double dose of Aquarian energy there. Okay. Now, it's interesting because Saturn also is influenced by this card, or I should say it, it influences this card, and then we have Saturn popping up here. So a lot of Saturnian energy, a lot of Aquarian energy. All right, let me re-roll for the Deccan. Okay, seven. So we are in the middle Deccan of Aquarius, which is the Lord of Earned Success. Now, it generally means that we have put in the work and we are we are on a trip which will we or I should say we are on a journey in which we've done the work and we are about to see the the end results of of our of our labor we we are about to see the fruits of our labor and with it being influenced with so much saturnian energy here means that we would have we we need to focus on the structures and we need to focus on our routines and we need to have a really concrete solid plan to to manifest this fire to manifest our ambitions so it's suggesting hey you know really know what you're doing really make plans really have everything um ha have everything in order as you're about to carry out your ambitions and your drives and your intentions. With it being in the 11th house, we are also seeing how it relates to, let's say, the community at large. So focus, direct those intentions towards the community at large. The 11th house uh, can also represent, in modern times, it can also represent technology and social media as well. So as we begin to reach out and branch out with our intentions, have a strong plan with how you are going to be reaching out on a broad scale. Um, all right, excellent, excellent. And let's see. It looks as though... Yeah, I would say... I would say um, the health aspect of Virgo and of the Three of Swords is probably diminished a little bit to be to be more represented by service to others. Because here it's suggesting, okay, have a strong plan with how you're going to reach out to people in your community or online. And here, again, like I said, Virgo can either represent health or service to others. So this is this is still a very positive read. Um, all right, let's keep going. Let's see. So next is the element of air, which is represented by the swords. And what is influencing the element of air? Let's see. Okay, nothing there yet. Let's see. No squares, no trines, none of that yet. 
Let's see what's going to happen now. Okay, so what's influencing the element of air? The Hierophant. Okay. So air generally represents our communication um, and our intellectual pursuits. With it being influenced by the Hierophant, it's saying it would suggest that we would have to look to established and traditional means, which is no surprise because here you have Saturn, a lot of Saturnian energy influencing fire. And yeah, it's a, so, so it, it would, it would go back and say, and be a further su suggestion to not necessarily abandon the old ways quite yet, but to just keep those in mind and to help use what is established to proceed forward. Okay, let's see what the astrology die have to recommend for that. All right, so we have the south node in Sagittarius in the sixth house. All right, a lot of sixth house energy. Okay, let's re-roll for the Deccan. All right, we are in the third Deccan of Sagittarius. Okay, wow. All right, so the third Deccan of Sagittarius is called the Lord of Oppression, and that is also influenced by Saturn. Wow, a lot of Saturnian energy. So here we have, and also um, we have a conjunction between spirit and air. So that would help to, let's say, it kind of amplifies what, what both are saying. Um, again, it all relates back to the to the element of spirit. And with this conjunction happening, it sort of reinforces both of them. That yes, a a good good news and manifestation is on the way. And also to look to what is established in order to go forward. So not proceeding forward in let's say too progressive of a manner, but proceeding forward within the balance and within the respect of established traditions, and ways of doing things. Again, a lot of Saturnian energy. Saturn, Saturn, or we have two Saturns represented here. We have Saturn popping up here in the third decan of Sagittarius. And also, with the south node coming up, it's saying to look towards the past. Look, look towards those past karmic lessons that we've learned as well. So again, a lot about what is what is established, what is in the past to help us move forward is, is beginning to pop up. And yeah, again, with it influencing air, it would sit, it would suggest, uh, perhaps, perhaps reading, you know, catching up on, on, um, on again, more established means, um, maybe rereading some old material as well. Re, you know, going over old material that that you probably gleaned over and then go back and have, go back to it with a different perspective, go back to it to see what it's trying to tell you, perhaps in a different way. And again, with it influencing Virgo, or, or with it in the house of Virgo, um, again, a lot of the, a lot of the service to others is beginning to, to pop up. So, okay. Let's move right along to the element of Earth, which is represented by the pentacles. All right, so got a conjunction, and let's see what else is going to be happening. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we have an inverted four of swords. Now, the four of swords is the lord of rest from strife, but when it's inverted, it means that the rest period is over and now we're being called back into action. And so with that being influencing or or with that influencing the element of earth, it would suggest that we either need to, let's say, get on some type of exercise regimen because Earth represents 
in this particular reading, earth can represent the body. So maybe we need to get back into an exercise regimen, a type of physical regimen. It can also suggest that perhaps we need to invest our money in in a way, we, we need to make our capital work for us in, in some type of way. Now again, if, you know, when it comes to finance, make sure to, to consult the appropriate professionals and... Again, this reading is just to to suggest what you may already kind of know within yourself. So, some type of health regimen, maybe some type of investment, but I, but it's being, but again, this is calling us into action, and it would actually make sense because you know here we have we have everything which is about to call us into action here. All right, let's see what the astrology die have to recommend. The moon in Gemini in the 12th house. All right. <laughs> so let's reroll for the Deccan. All right. So we are in the first Deccan of Gemini, which is the Lord of Shortened Force. And we have the moon influencing that within the 12th house. Okay. So there's a lot going on here with the element of Earth. We have a lot of lunar energy with it, with the twelfth house being influenced by Pisces, and also the moon influencing, um, and also the, the moon being the planetary influence, and we also have the Lord of Shortened Force in the first decan of Gemini, which is Jupiter influencing that first decan. So let's see. Okay. So when we have the Lord of Shortened Force, that the the lesson of that card is is to basically not become restricted by having too many options. We need to pare down our options so that we can begin to focus. And with the Moon influencing that, especially with it being in the twelfth house, it means we should look inward. We we should do a lot of reflection. Uh, the twelfth house is also about endings as well. So perhaps. It is calling us to look within ourselves and find on a deep spiritual level, find on a, a very sort of deep introspective level to begin to remove those restrictions by having too many options. Really look within ourselves and ask, ask ourselves, okay, what do we need? What, what do we need so that we can go forward, so that we can spring into action either with our health regimen or by, you know, by, by making our capital work for us. Look on a deep introspective level, almost a sort of spiritual and mystical level on what is truly needed to, to get this, to get the material world in order, to get the body in order, to get our finances in order. Okay, let's see. What else do we have? We have... All right, it looks like we have... No, no, we don't. We almost have an opposition forming, but not quite yet. It's just out of reach. Okay, let's move right along to the last element, which is water, and it's represented by the cups. So water represents our emotions, our intuition. Um, it, can, it can also represent ancestral ancestral influences, um, sort of deep mystical influences as well sometimes. So let's see what's wa what, what water is being influenced by. Okay. The tower. All right, so let me put this over here. So the tower is in astrological terms, is also represented by Mars. Um, now, as, as we're looking at this, it's really interesting because the tower also calls for a change in, in our individual approach as well. Um, and with that influencing cups, it would probably suggest, it would seem to suggest that we need to make a change within our emotional state, within our internal emotional state. And again, it's it's the collapse of an old structure so that we can rebuild something new. Um, 
yeah, so so we have we have an interesting mix of looking towards looking towards the past to to influence the future. Um, okay, let, let's see what the astrology die have to say. All right, Neptune in Aquarius in the fourth house. Okay, let's re-roll for the deck in. All right, so we are in the first decan of Aquarius. Okay. So, let's see. The first decan of Aquarius is the Lord of Defeat. Now, it could mean... It could mean, let's say, again, being a sore winner or a sore loser. Um, but either way... Within this particular, within this particular reading, I would say that the defeat has to deal with ourselves. Um, with, with it combined with the tower right here, we are we are looking at a restructuring of of who we are. So it would make sense. The tower is collapsing um, to bring forth something else. To to bring forth. Um, to bring forth a, a sort of new emotional state within ourselves. Okay, with it being in the fourth house, that would have to relate to, to our family. Hmm. And with it also being influenced by Neptune, it would have to be, let's say, taking a a distant stance from it, or a, a distance stance. Uh, Neptune is also represented by the hangman in tarot, and that means sort of stepping out of yourself to view what's happening. So again, we have a lot of of sort of restructuring on the emotional level, and this is telling us to take a step back, also not only with ourselves, but also take a step back and really evaluate our relationship within the home life, also within our families as well. Um, okay, very interesting. So we have, let's see, let's see if we have anything else forming. No, we do not. Okay, so we have a lot of things happening here. Again, the spirit is saying there is a lot of a lot of positivity and a lot of abundance, which is on the way. Um, Jupiter is very expansive, and there is a lot of joy, which is about to manifest. But to get there first, we have to we have to really look at at our drives and and our ambitions. We need to really look at at what matters to us within our spirit and within our communication with society on a broader sense. It would also suggest that in our intellectual and in our intellectual endeavors that we need to go back and truly look at the established means to to look to, to look into what, what has already been established and to look to the past as as suggested by the South Node, in order to proceed forward. Um, it would also suggest that on a deep level, within our material works, we need to we need to pare down what our options are so that we can spring into actions. We need to to basically terminate those things those those options which no longer serve us so we can have a clear cut path on the material world and on an emotional level it would suggest that we also need to look deep within not only ourselves but our home and our family life to really proceed forward so again a lot of lessons here but overall the reading is very positive um, okay so that's about it for now Thank you for joining me on this week's reading. I look forward to seeing you again next week. And much love and blessings. I love you all. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. If you resonate with what you are seeing or hearing, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share Obleron's content. It really helps him to spread the word and to grow his channel and pages. Collective readings are posted Mondays on the High Priestesses Circle. 
Teachings are posted Wednesdays on the Magister's Sanctum, and the music from those episodes are posted Fridays on the Empress's Theater. Posters and merch related to Obleron's teachings are available at obleron.square.site. Music from the episodes is also available at obleron.bandcamp.com. Obleron is spelled O-B-L-Y-R-O-N. Lastly, don't forget to connect with the community on Discord. It's called the Magister's Council, and look for the invite link in the description boxes and profiles below. There are astrology and wellness bots, as well as games and discussion forums available for free. There is also an exclusive members-only section with additional content and live streams for subscribers. Obleron also takes inquiries for services through Discord. In case you missed anything, all the links are available in the description boxes and profiles below. Thank you everyone and much love to all.